The first thing you're going to do is open GIMP on your computer. If you click on your Start menu and you're at your school computers, GIMP should be right here on your Start menu. It may actually also be on your desktop, but uh, this is where I usually find mine, but it should all be downloaded on all of your computers. So then it's going to open up, and the first thing we're going to do is we are going to open our picture in GIMP. So we're going to do File, Open as Layers. Okay, and this is where you're going to find your picture. My picture is saved on my desktop. And we're going to open it. And the next thing you want to do once it's open is you're going to duplicate this layer twice. So down here on your layers, you should be able to create a duplicate of the layer and add it to the image. We're going to click that twice. Once, twice. Okay, so now you've got that uh, set up. We're going to hide the bottom layer. And when the top layer is in blue, that means it's highlighted. And what we want to do is we want to invert this image first. So we're going to right click on it and we're going to go down to colors and we're going to go to invert. Okay. And then before we move on, we need to right click again. And again, we will go to, um, sorry, we'll go to filters this time and we're going to blur it with a Gaussian blur and the Gaussian blur should be set to 7. Okay. Once we have that, we want to change this layer. The mode is normal right now. We're going to change that mode to Dodge. And then you'll have this sketch um, version of your picture. Now we want to merge those two layers. So if you just right click on that top layer and say merge, it's going to merge just the visible layers, just the ones with the eyes that are open. So you don't want to merge the third one, but as long as the eye isn't on, it won't. So we're going to merge those layers. Now we have one layer here with that we've made our changes to. Okay, once your picture is like this, we're going to go into the threshold. So we're going to right click on it, and we're going to go into colors and threshold. And it's set at 127, but if you just pull that over to about 2... Oh, 250 is too much for my picture. Well, but, you know, if you fiddle with this so you've got enough detail, you don't want too much detail because this is a line drawing. So for me, maybe uh, 240, oh, 237, 240, maybe 240 is about good. And I'll say OK. And so then I've got this picture here. Now what I want to do is create a new layer again. So go down to this button down here and we're going to create a new layer. And we're going to call this one skin. Because I'm going to color all of my skin uh, uh, one color here. So we've made a new layer called it skin, but we want to change the mode from normal to... Uh, where is it here? To multiply. And that way when I color the skin, these lines, these black lines on there, will still continue to stay there. So I'm going to click my paintbrush, and I'm going to pick a skin color, and you can fiddle around in there and find a skin color that you like, or whatever you want to have in there. I've already, let's see. I've got one I've chosen from before, so I'll just pick that one and say OK. And then you can go ahead and paint uh, right on here, and then it'll allow, allow you to paint. Um, the only thing I would recommend is don't paint the eyes. Anything that you're going to be wanting white later, um, don't paint that um, or your teeth. So keep that in mind. So when you're painting this in here uh, with your skin color, don't paint the whites of your eyes and don't paint your teeth if you happen to be smiling in your picture and you've got um, your teeth showing in there I wouldn't paint any of those either so I'm just going to take a minute and finish painting this you don't need to sit here and watch me do this you get the idea you just had to click on your paintbrush tool and then select your color if your paintbrush tool is not um, say it's too fat for some reason and you want it to be a little thinner, thinner. For example, if you're going around the edges here and you're, 
your paintbrush is too thick and it's not giving you as much uh, detail as you want, then you can go down here to the size of it and you can change the size to whatever you want. I mean, it'll go as low as one, but if you changed it to five, five is pretty thin, but maybe that'll help you around some outlines or things like that. Uh, maybe I'm going to set mine to 10 right now and see where that gets me and so then that will help you throughout this this picture if you're just doing the bigger areas save yourself some time and and uh, I don't know set it maybe to 20 and that should be lots for this so I'll just pause this video and I'll go in and uh, have this all done just in case you weren't sure if you've made a mistake so you've gone way off like that with your paint there is an eraser tool just click the eraser and you'll be able to go in just fine with the eraser and take all that out. Okay, and then when you want to paint again, click back on the paintbrush. Okay, I'll see you in a minute when we've got all the skin color done in here. Okay, once you've got all of your color done on your skin and you're happy with how that looks, we're going to create those Ben Day dots using the newsprint distortion. So we'll right click on it, we'll go to filters, distorts, and we will go down to newsprint. There we go. And it will create uh, the dots all over it for you. So you can choose how small you want those dots on there. I mean, if you go really big, it, I mean, it, it does that, and that really isn't the effect of, um, that's not the right effect that uh, Lichtenstein photos would have or the use of the Ben Day dots. So you can just decide in here where, how big or how small you want those dots. Maybe. Do I want them? But anyway, you can decide. I'm going to do mine at five here, and you can decide what's what uh, you would like to have happen. Then you can say okay, and then you can see the face goes into all those Ben Day dots, just like in the Lichtenstein photo. So if we're happy with that, what we're going to do is we're going to merge these two layers here. So I'm just going to right click and merge down, and now I have that one layer again. Now what we want to do, because all Lichtenstein's pop art photos, when he had this done with those Ben Day dots, he didn't do usually the whole picture in the dots. He had lots of solid colors in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another layer. So we're going to go down to this button again and create another layer. This one I'm going to call hair, although it's, it's going to be the hair or the eyes um, or the sweater. And it'll be a transparent layer, which is good. And we're going to add that in. And uh, again, we want to change this layer not to be normal, but rather to be multiply so that we can still see the black lines in there. And now when we're on this one, we're just going to paint the hair and the sweater, whatever color we want. And remember that when we had Lichtenstein's photos, you know, the hair color is quite a cartoon hair color. So for this one, I could choose, you know, I could choose the hair to be quite to be quite yellow and that would match up just fine with his with his photo so we'll say okay and we'll just paint all the hair yellow in here and we can do that with the hair and then we'll go in and do that with the sweater as well and you can go in and you can color the the dots on the eyes as well if you want to come in and be a little bit more um, uh, detailed on the eyes, like maybe you can't see the eyes very well, just do control and then uh, move the the wheel on your mouse and that'll allow you to zoom in or zoom out if you need to get in uh, more detail. Okay, so then once you've added in all the colors you've wanted, I've added a bit of red in for the lips and colored the eyes there and the hair as well. Uh, and if you're happy with those two pieces, then we can merge these two visible layers again. So again, we can right click on that one, merge down, and then we've uh, got this is all one layer now. Oh, well, anyway, I'll, I'll, so then I'll click on this one and I'll just click this arrow down to move it down. So what I have is this top picture, and if I click it to be visible, and then I change my, that top layer, I mean, I want to do, make sure I'm clicked on the top layer, not the bottom layer. And I'll make sure the top layer is set not to normal, but rather to overlay. 
and then it just adds a little bit the picture just comes through a little bit I'm not sure if you can see a huge difference you can see the sweater changes ever so slightly the eyes change ever so slightly um, in this one you can't see the hair change but if it was a little bit darker it would change a little bit more okay so it just has that picture show through a little bit Okay, so as we're going through here, what I want you to do now is to merge these two layers. So you'll have the photo layer and the layer that you've done all your editing on. So if you just go to those and right click on it and merge those layers, now you're going to have one layer. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to get rid of the background. So we're choosing that selection tool and as you go around your image, all you have to do is, I've just left click, just a normal mouse click, and I've held it down. So as I'm going around the face here, I'm still holding down the click on the mouse all the way around, and that way it's just like doing a pencil outline around it. So I'm just following my mouse and doing my outline. You might have to try this a few times to, to get the handle of moving your mouse around your desk and that kind of thing. But what's going on here is we're just going all the way around the head and you have to actually go all the way around and close off this selection that you're doing here. So you'll see as you still keep dragging the mouse around, I've still got my finger held on the click of the mouse and I'm going entirely all around the colored portion. And you'll see I have to go along the bottom of the picture as well. And then when I get to the other side, there, now my entire selection is done. What you have to do here, though, is you have to go and select and invert this, okay? So when you invert it, now it's no longer selecting the color portion, but it's selecting the background. And all you had to do was click Delete. Now we want to create our background, so we're going to create a new layer. We'll call this layer Background. And we want to make sure that this layer is not on top. So click on your background to move it down below the colored portion. Now you can just use your bucket fill tool. Select color that you want. A nice blue would be a good for a background. Something bright like Lichtenstein would use. And we're going to click our bucket tool in the background. And what do you know? We have a beautiful blue background. Now you could leave it here, but I'm going to go a little bit further and create some uh, red radiuses coming out here, sort of like the uh, red sun coming out. So I'm just going to use my selection tool, the same one you use to go around the picture with to select it. And I'm just creating uh, a number of triangles on the background layer. Remember these have to be on the background layer. If you put them on the color layer, uh, that you've just done, then it's going to go right over top of the face. But So I'm just using my selection tool, making these triangles, choosing my bulk fill, my bucket tool, and filling it with red. So I thought red and blue went quite nice together, and we'll create this bright effect here. So we're going to continue doing this just with the selection tool and our bucket fill to create an even more vibrant background. Once you've finished doing that in the background, you should go up and select none, and then that way you won't have any issues of having a selection occurring on both layers. We're going to create one more background layer. We're going to call it bubble. And what we're going to do here is this is where our narration bubble is going to go on, our cartoon bubble that has our onomatopoeia on it. Okay? So we've created a bubble layer. We had to go over to the circle ellipse tool and drag an ellipse over there. Then you want to click on your selection tool, but make sure you click on that little red button where it says um, merge to existing selection. And that way, when I put this little triangle on the bottom, it all becomes one big selection. Then we can go in and we can bulk fill this with white. And now we want to create our outline. So we want to go select to path. And then we're going to go back up and we're going to do select none. And then nothing's going to be highlighted. Now we're going to go under edit and stroke path. 
Your line width at about four is good, but make sure your color isn't set to white anymore. Make sure it's set to black. And when you press stroke, you should get a lovely black outline around your bubble. So you've got a bubble layer. Now you can add some text. You can go over to your toolbox and add a text layer here and add in whatever your onomatopoeia was. What was it that you had? Were you doing splat? Hmm, shh, uh, whiz, what is it? What were you going to do on your onomatopoeia to make this uh, similar to Liechtenstein? And you can choose the size of that. And then you should have your text layer done. Now the last thing um, that we're going to do is we're going to create one more layer. And this one, I'm going to call this one lines. Because what I really want to do is go over this with some black outlining on this to really make it look more like a Liechtenstein photo. Um, you're going to choose your brush tool or your pencil tool and try not to choose it too thick. You'll have to play around with what uh, works best for you. Try a 10 in terms of your size on there to see what will work better. And the other thing you're going to have to make sure is that this layer is under, is, pardon me, is over top of the uh, colored layer that you had done your editing on. Otherwise, it's not going to show up. So make sure you move that layer to the top your, your lining layer, and then you can just go around things in black. This doesn't give you a super, super smooth one. Um, some of the limitations in GIMP uh, with that, that's not really what GIMP was meant to do. But if you go through there and you can outline everything you want, you can change your size. I think I wasn't happy with a 10 here, so I'll change it down and try a 5 and see if that works. And so then I'll go around here and I've gone around a little bit and you can see as I go further I go into the hair and I add a few lines in the hair and I go around the lips and the finger and I change the sizing a little bit uh, on the pencil depending where I am on the finger when I ended up doing an outline on that I ended up changing it. So you'll see what happens here when we change into adding these lines it just really makes the whole thing pop. So there's the finished look once you've got all the lines in. You can see I did some lines around the lips, around the fingers. I drew some lines in the hair just to make it pop a little bit as well. And once you're all finished with this, uh, you're going to want to merge all of your layers together when they're all finished, okay? So you'll just go up and you'll highlight on them and um, you'll have to merge, um, I think on this one when I keep merging down, it's only merging one at a time. But so if you click on the top one and you right click and then you can press merge and you can do that for each of your layers until you're down to one layer on your merging. And then you're going to be able to save this. And there's two things, you, two ways to save this. One, you can save it, and you can save this as an XCF, and that will mean that you can come back in here and edit it later. So make sure you save it twice. You're going to save it once as an XCF, and that is your GIMP file, so you can always go back in and save it. Or sorry, and you can do some edits to it. Okay. And the other thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to export this. So you're going to need to export it, and when you export it, that's when you'll get it as a JPEG. It may default to a PNG, but change it to a JPEG. And then you can export it, and then you have your JPEG picture. Not your working file, but your JPEG picture. Okay, so that should uh, help you along with your pop art tutorial.